I was struggling to understand how de Brown indices are implemented in Tiny Idris, so I decided to make a quick video explaining how this works for future reference. This video assumes that you, the viewer, have some familiarity with Lambda Calculus, Idris, and have some understanding of the term representation in Tiny Idris's core. If you don't know what de Brown indices are, I'll quickly give a high-level overview of what they are. They are an efficient way of making sure that variables don't have conflicting names. This is achieved by using natural numbers to identify each variable based on how many nested binders are between the site where the variable is used and its binder. That's a lot to unpack, so let's look at some examples. Here, we have an identity function that takes an argument x and in the body of the function returns x. Using de Brown indices, we can rewrite this function as lambda 0. Here, the 0 refers to the argument x, since there's no other lambda binders between our usage of x and its lambda binder. Next, we'll look at nested lambdas. In this case, we have two variables, x and y, and we are returning x. Using de Brown indices, we can rewrite this as lambda lambda 1. Here, 1 refers to x because our usage of x has one binder, the binder for y, between it and x's binder. Likewise, if we wanted to return y instead, we would write lambda lambda 0, since there are no other lambda binders between our usage of y and its binder. One more example. Let's look at something a bit trickier. In this example, we have a lambda that takes an argument x and applies another lambda to x. The inner lambda ignores its argument and returns x. Using de Brown indices, we write this as lambda open parenthesis lambda 1 close parenthesis 0. Note that despite being used in two different places, x does not use the same natural number in both places. This is because one usage of x has the binder of y between it and x's binder, while the other usage does not have any binders between it and x's binder. If instead we were to try and use y in the inner lambda, its de Brown index would be 0. For more details on de Brown indices, I recommend checking out the Wikipedia article on them. With all that out of the way, let's get into the code. It's easier to understand what's going on by using the REPL to evaluate some functions that operate on terms. Here, I've made a couple examples that show how the subst function works. Subst here takes two explicit parameters, an argument and a scope. Here, I pass in t-type as the argument, and the scope simply contains a local variable with index 0. Running this through the REPL shows us that the local variable was replaced by our argument, t-type. Let's try a more complicated example. Here we have the same argument, but the scope is a bit more complex. This time we have an application of a lambda to another local variable with index 1. Inside our lambda, instead of returning the lambda's bound variable, we return a local variable with index 1. So what happens when we evaluate this? We'll see that inside of the lambda, our local variable was replaced by t-type. In addition, our other local variable outside of the lambda was not replaced, but instead had its index decremented. So what's happening here? In order to understand why certain variables are replaced and others are not, we need to understand how the context for each term works. Terms are parameterized by a list of variable names. This tells us which variables are accessible within the scope of the term. On top of that, the index of each name in the list uniquely identifies each variable. Thus, two variables named x in the same list will be considered two separate variables if they are stored at different positions in the list. With this knowledge, let's look at the type signature of subst again. We can see that the argument and scope each have a different context, where the scope has an additional variable prepended to it. This is very important to take note of, because that means when we refer to a local variable at index 0 within the scope, it will refer to this prepended variable x. Looking back at our first example, we saw that subst replaced the local variable with index 0 in our scope with the argument t-type. From this behavior, we can conclude that subst replaces the prepended variable x referred to by our local variable with index 0 with the given argument. But what about the second example? There aren't any local variables with index 0 in our scope, so why does anything get replaced at all? If we look at the definition of the bind constructor, we can see that it takes a scope parameter that prepends an additional parameter to the context. This makes sense because the body of a lambda should include its parameters in its scope. In addition, 
all of the parameters defined outside of the lambda are still accessible. Thus, for our second example, the variable we are replacing is actually the second one in the scope of our lambda binder. This explains why we replace the variable at index 1, but only when it is inside the lambda binder. As for why the outer variable's index decrements, we can look at the type signature of subst for the answer. It says that the resulting term's context does not include x, which was present in the scope. Thus, it simply drops the first variable from the context, meaning our local variable at index 1 is now at index 0. This makes sense because we don't need the variable x we added temporarily to the scope's context now that we've replaced every instance of it with the given argument. With all that explained, it should hopefully be a bit clearer how de Brown indices are implemented in Tiny Idris and give a clearer idea of how they work in general. Thanks for watching!